Welcome to Solving for Trig Equations, Part 2. Uh, we're going to look at some additional examples that we didn't get a chance to look at from last class. Our first example that we have right here, uh, you'll notice that there's something that we hadn't seen from the previous day, and that is when you have something between your trig ratio adjusting the period. So in this case, we have something here that says 2 sine 3x plus 1 equals 0. We hadn't seen anything other than just having um, a regular 1x in front of there. So how would we solve for this? Um, the first thing that I'm going to suggest is let's ignore the 3. So take a look at our steps right here and we'll just say, would we know how to solve something that says 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0? We would isolate for our variable like we learned from last class, and we got that by subtracting 1 and then dividing by 2. And so then we would have something that would say sine x equals negative 1 half. From here, we would draw our quadrants. And we know that sine would be in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. And we know that because it's negative in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. And applying your SOHCAHTOA, our opposite over hypotenuse, our opposite would be 1, our hypotenuse would be 2. And we would create a ratio of a 30-60-90 triangle. We're talking in radians, so we know that our reference angle here would be a pi over 6, equivalent to 30 degrees. And so then they want to find out what these two terminal arms would be. So if we were to solve this, how we had learned from last class, we would go over an entire pi plus a pi over 6. And you would end up with one solution being at 7 pi over 6. For our second solution, you would have gone over the entire 2 pi. You subtract a pi over 6. And if you take a 6 away from 2, you'd be left with 11 pi over 6. Now, I'm going to purposely write these on top of each other because we're going to expand upon each of these two ideas. So just remember that what we just solved for is when sine x is equal to negative 1 half. But the actual question isn't saying that. The actual question is saying when is sine 3x equal to negative 1 half. So we now have to take a look at this new part here where we have this 3. And it tells us in this case that this is representing some sort of horizontal compression by a factor of one third. So 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 aren't actual solutions for what we have, given that we now are horizontally compressing everything by one third. And so what we'll need to do now is to find our first actual solutions between 0 and 2 pi, we have to times each of these solutions by one third, giving us 7 pi over 18 and 11 pi over 18. Now they want to list all the answers between 0 and 2 pi and what you'll find is because you've horizontally compressed something, everything's going to happen more frequently than what it would have originally. So just to, to use a visual example, if you look at what sine x would look like between 0 and 2 pi and when it would intersect with negative 1 half, we used to have two solutions, as we found when we solved for 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. But given our new situation, in which we now have something in which um, we're taking a look at it and we know it's been compressed by a third, we no longer have a graph that looks like that. We have something that's going to happen three times as frequently between 0 and 2 pi this would be 2 pi right here, which means that it would now intersect 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to have six solutions for this specific question. So 7 pi over 18 and 11 pi over 18 are our first two solutions. So let's box that just to make sure that that's really clear. And then to find our additional solutions, we need to add the period. And our period, in this case, is going to be 2 pi over 3. 
our b value is 3, and we know period equals 2 pi over the b value. And instead of saying 2 pi over 3, let's also write it so it has a lowest common denominator. And we could write it as something in which it's 2 pi over 3, but we could also say it's 12 pi over 18. And we can do that because if we say that, we can now find our additional solutions really efficiently. So 7 pi over 18 works, and if we add 12 pi over 18 to that, we would get 19 pi over 18. And if we add another 12 pi over 18 to that, we would get 31 pi over 18. On the on the bottom here, where we have 11 pi over 18, we would add 12 to that, so we get 23 pi over 18. And we add another 12 pi here, and we get 35 pi over 18. And you'll notice that all six of those solutions stay within 0 to 2 pi. 2 pi would be 36 pi over 18, so we're just under that. And those are the six solutions that would be the exact values uh, for this particular question. Uh, the final thing is they're going to ask for something in general form as well. So for general form, you would look at your 7 pi over 18. That's our first solution that we found. And you can say, we're going to say plus every 2n pi over 3. We're going to add the period to it. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for 11 pi over 18. And that's going to say that we're adding the period of 2 pi over 3 for any integer, and we'll continue to do that for all of the 7 pi over 18 values and 11 pi over 18 values. So that would be the general solution right there. Moving on to our next example, um, we'll get to practice this a little bit more. So if you feel confident from that, feel free to pause the video right now and give give this next one a try. Um, I would anticipate that these questions are a little bit more challenging, so you might want to see a second example before you try one on your own. Again, uh, our first point is to say let's ignore whatever that b value is. So in this case, let's ignore uh, the cos 2x and just see it as cos x. And so what we could do is we could say let's solve for 2 cos x equals root 2 ignoring this 2 right here. Let's divide by 2, and we would say that cosine of x equals root 2 over 2. I know a couple of people asked um, in the past, if you say root 2 over 2, just remember that's equivalent to saying 1 over root 2. It's just a rationalized denominator uh, form of it. And 1 over root 2 is going to be a little bit easier to see because when we draw our special angle triangles, you'll know that um, it will be able to be something that could be part of our 45, 45, 90 ratio. So we draw our cast and cosine is equal to a positive one over root two. Cosine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant four. So we construct a triangle in quadrant one, quadrant four, and we know our adjacent over hypotenuse is one over root two, one over root two. So then based off of this, we want to be able to see what we could potentially find from that. And if we take a look at that, we know cosine is ka, adjacent over hypotenuse, 45 degrees. But 45 degrees, let's convert that to radians and say my first terminal arm would be at pi over 4 in quadrant 1. And then my second terminal arm would be the full 2 pi, take away a pi over 4. So 2 pi subtract pi over 4 would leave me with 7 pi over 4. And those are the two solutions if it had said 2 cosine x equals root 2. But it doesn't say that. We have our b value of 2 here. So then the next thing we need to do is we need to compress it. And we have a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half. So let's times this by a half, and let's times this by a half. And we could come up with a solution of pi over 8 and 7 pi over 8. And those two, let's box those, are going to be our first two true solutions. Uh, they want to list everything between 0 and 2 pi, so we should figure out that our period is going to be 2 pi over 2, or just pi. Or we could also say, let's get a common denominator of 8, and let's say it's 8 pi over 8. Because if we take this and we have our common denominator, we can quickly add 8 pi over 8 to pi over 8, 
and that would give us 9 pi over 8. And in this case, we would get 15 pi over 8. And those four solutions would all be within the 0 to 2 pi range, so we are in good shape there. Um, as a typical rule, in almost every case, um, I'd say in like 99% of cases, uh, you're going to be able to say the B value of 2 would tell us that we're going to double the number of solutions, meaning we have four solutions here. Whereas for the previous example, when you saw the uh, B value of three, we tripled the number of solutions to give us six solutions. So that B value is generally going to tell us the number of solutions we have. Um, there's the odd exception if we're looking at quadrantal angle points or we're looking at points that, um, that are um, not, not um, going to give us any solutions at all. Okay, so uh, there's our four solutions for our general solution. We can now say x equals pi over 8 plus every n pi, and x equals 7 pi over 8 plus every n pi n e i. Okay, our next example. So here we have a tan example right here. And uh, this is the same as saying 4 tan 1 half x plus 4 equals 0. Ignore the 1 half right now, and let's just treat this as 4 tan x plus 4 equals 0, and let's isolate for tan x. So we could say 4 tan x equals negative 4 divided by 4, and tan x equals negative 1. tan is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. And from there, you can almost see that as negative 1 over 1, meaning we go opposite 1, adjacent 1, or opposite 1 and adjacent 1 here. And what that does is that creates our 45, 45, 90 special angle triangles. So our reference angle is 45 degrees or a pi over 4 in radians. So to find our terminal arm up here or our terminal arm down here, we would have traveled the entire pi, subtract a pi over 4. One subtract a quarter is going to leave us with three quarters. So we have three pi over four being one solution there. And then for our second solution, we've gone over the full two pi, subtract a pi over four. And then that's going to leave us with seven pi over four. So those are the two solutions you would get if we didn't have the one half there and just said a regular tan x. So what does our one-half mean? So just remember, if that says a one-half, that's a horizontal expansion by a factor of two, meaning that we have a solution times two times two. And this is going to be quite a unique answer because we're going to get something that's going to say six pi over four, or if you want, you could say three pi over two. And in this case here, you would get seven pi over two in lowest terms. And so if you have something like that, just think about what they're asking for. They're saying, find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. And if we've gone through this horizontal expansion, um, that is one of those rare exceptions where things are a little bit different. 3 pi over 2 definitely falls within our window, and that's going to be a, a solution that we have. And we know that our period is pi over b for tan, and so it would be pi over 1 half, so our period is going to equal 2 pi. So if our period is 2 pi, that means that if you add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi from 3 pi over 2, you wouldn't fall into the window that they're looking for for any additional solutions there. And then the next thing is when you see 7 pi over 2, that's equivalent to saying 3 and a half pi. And 3 and a half pi doesn't fall in that window between 0 and 2 pi. So you can't accept this as a solution. And you actually only end up with 1 total solution. Okay, so 3 pi over 2 is all the solutions we have between 0 and 2 pi. And then as a general solution, you could say x equals 3 pi over 2 plus every 2n pi. And that's going to account for the period that we just found, and it'll give us every additional solution from there.
this next question now looks uh, it looks a little bit familiar we have something in which it looks like a quadratic it looks like something that we could factor as a trinomial and once again um, they would only have a question here if this 2x was consistent with that 2x we wouldn't have a question in which this was a 2x here and and we had something here where that was just sine x um, that that would be something where you'd have to just purely use your graphing calculator or something to be able to solve for it but i don't think you're going to see anything like that um, so as we've done with all our previous examples let's ignore the 2x and just treat it as an x value and solve for when we have sine squared x minus sine x minus 2 equals 0. we could factor this and we would get sine x is at the front and then we can say it'll be minus 2 and positive 1 and so that's going to give us a solution of sine x equaling 2 and sine x equaling negative 1. as you've seen in the past if sine x equals something that's either greater than 1 or less than negative one, you're not going to be able to produce any solutions at all. Uh, just to recall, looking at the sine x equals two ratio, if you had sine x drawn right here, where that's a height of one and a height of negative one, and then you have a two across here, they will never ever intersect, meaning that you're not going to have any solutions. So we can reject that to be able to find out any solutions from there. And then for sine x equaling negative 1, that's one of our quadrantal angle points. Um, and so we can draw our unit circle around here. And we want to find out when our y value, because sine x is equivalent to our y value, when our y value produces something, whoops, that's a plus sign, where our y value produces something that's a negative 1, and that occurs right here and that is at 3 pi over 2 in radians so we get a solution of 3 pi over 2. now recall that the 3 pi over 2 is representing the solution for sine x and not for sine 2x and so what does this 2 tell us this 2 tells us that we have a horizontal compression by a factor of one half and so if we take 3 pi over 2 and we times it by one half then we would get a solution of 3 pi over 4. And that is our first official solution. Then we need to find the period. And our period is going to be 3 pi over 4. And we're going to times it by, oh, sorry, our period is not going to be 3 pi over 4. Our period is going to be 2 pi over the b value. Our b value is 2, meaning that our period will just be pi or we could say 4 pi over 4 with a common denominator. So if I add 4 pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4, I come up with 7 pi over 4. And those are the two solutions I would get between 0 and 2 pi for that. Um, OK, so from there, our general solution would be x equals 3 pi over 4 plus every well think about this how do you how did you find your next solution you added the period to it and so we added the period to it and the period of pi so we could say plus every n pi and then that'll give us all of our future solutions forwards and backwards so each of those examples are definitely a little bit more complicated than what we saw from the previous day Example 13 now is something that's going to require a calculator. So make sure you have your graphing calculator ready to go. And um, one thing that you could do, if there's no need to show any work, is you could just put this into your graphing calculator. You could graph that as y1, where you change cosecant into um, and cotangent into sines and cosines. And you can enter that into your graphing calculator, set your window between 0 and 2 pi, and you could find all of the x-intercepts. and that's one way of being able to solve for it, and it's definitely a very good way of being able to check to see if you have the right solution. So what we want to do, though, is we want to be able to 
focus a little bit more on the algebra around this and see what we can do to uh, solve for this as much as we can without a calculator. Um, now this is a tricky question. You could you can consider moving everything to sines and cosines for sure, um, but whenever we see these squared values, I think it's important that we think about what would happen with our Pythagorean identity. So just down here, I'm just going to write a refresher and just remember that cosecant squared x is equal to 1 plus cotan squared x. That's one of your Pythagorean identities. And that's particularly useful here because if you take a look at what we have in terms of trying to get this, these all consistent as one uh, trig ratio, if we change cosecant squared x to say 1 plus cotan squared x minus 2 cotan x minus 4 equals 0, we're going to be able to get things that are going to be consistent with each other. And let's let's rearrange it and see what happens. So cotan squared x minus 2 cotan x minus 3 equals 0. That looks like a trinomial that we could definitely factor. Okay, so uh, two numbers that times to negative 3 and add, oops, and add to negative 2 could be negative 3 and positive 1. We would get cotan x equals negative 1 and cotan x equals 3. So based off of that, uh, we could change it to tan if that's going to be a little bit easier for us. And um, in this case, you know what, let's, let's do that. Let's see what would end up happening. So you don't have to do this, but you could say tan x would equal its reciprocal, which would be negative 1. And in this case, tan x would be equal to 1 over 3. So we're going to get multiple solutions. For tan x equaling negative 1, we can do that part without a calculator. And let's, let's do that right here. I think we did that a couple examples ago already. We have a negative for tan in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. And negative 1 is the same as saying negative 1 over 1. So we have opposite over adjacent. And in quadrant 4, we have opposite over adjacent. It creates our 1, 1, root 2 ratios. To find out the terminal arms, we've traveled over a 3 pi over 4 and a 7 pi over 4. And unlike the other examples, there's no value next to the x. Uh, there's nothing compressing or expanding or period, meaning that 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 are two of our solutions. So we can box those and say that that's partially done. And then to find our additional solutions, it says find out when tan x is equal to 1 third, or if you chose to keep it as cotan x equaling 3. If we want to find out what these solutions are, it's it's tricky because we won't be able to do that with special angle triangles because there is no special angle triangle that would match up with that. And so the reason why it says calculators required is because we'd actually have to do some calculations for a question like this. So let's see what we could say. Let's go to, let's go to our calculator and it was tan. So let's say we wanted to find out something to do with one third. So we could say um, second tan of one third and we're going to get somewhere let's do two decimal places 0 0.32 and that's going to be one of our solutions think about where tan is positive it's positive in quadrant one and quadrant three and so to find our next answer you could also say it would be plus pi and you get 3.46 so 0 0.32 and 3.46 are our solutions let's just go through that a little bit right here if you were to do a sketch to see what was going on and we had a reference angle here of 0 0.32 in quadrant one and we had drew our cast we know that tan is positive in quadrant one and quadrant three. So the reason we get our second answer is because we can add pi to it, knowing that you would have a full pi plus 
the 0.32, and that's where we get those two decimal answers of 0 0.32 and of 3.46. We have four solutions between 0 and 2 pi, and then to give our general solution, we could say something along the lines of x equals 3 pi over 4 plus every n pi, and x equals 0 0.32 plus every n pi. Uh, now, I think that question was pretty challenging. Um, I know as a first instinct, you might want to change everything into sines and cosines. And if you did that, you might be a little bit stuck. So if that's the case, then I would just look back to your formula sheet and see if there's some additional options that you could use. And in this case, uh, we saw that we had a Pythagorean identity that made things a little bit easier than what it was from before. Here, our final example for the day. This is the specific of the specifics. We've, we're given the quad formula, so we're probably going to have to use that. We have a trinomial that we want to be able to factor. And if we think of, can we find two numbers at times to negative 2 and add to negative 3, there is no case in which that works. And so because there's no case in which that works, we know that we're going to have to put this into the quad. And so just as a reminder, here's our A value. Here's our B value. Here's our C value. So negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So we get 9 plus 8. So we get the square root of 17 over 2. So that is what x equals, and in this case, actually, we shouldn't say it's x. It's actually what cosine of x is going to be equal to. Let's find out what each of these are as decimals. So let's use our calculator, and let's find out what 3 plus root 17 is uh, divided by 2, and also 3 minus root 17 divided by 2. Now, if we know already if we go 3 plus the square root of 17, divided by 2, that's going to give us a fairly large number. That's going to tell us that we get 3.56. So we have something here that says cosine of x equals 3.56. We know right away that that's a number greater than 1. So if you tried to find any an answers with that, there wouldn't be and we would reject that right away. So let's find our second solution, and let's see what happens when we go 3 subtract the square root of 17 divided by 2. And now we get negative 0.56. That seems much more reasonable. So we'll round to two decimal places right here, and we'll just see... Uh, what happens? So we get negative uh, 0.56 as our second solution. So um, this is telling us here that cosine of x is equal to negative 0.56. And they want to find out what, what um, angle would be related to something like that. So given this, if you want to find out what angle x is, then let's go back to our calculator. I probably shouldn't have cleared that actually. I think we can bring that back by pressing second enter. No, let's uh, times that by two. Here we go. Okay, so we have the exact value of what we had. We want that full negative 0.56155. We want that whole thing in there. So given that, let's go uh, second cosine. We want to find out the radian answer of that, and we get 2.167, blah, blah, blah. So let's say 2.17, that'll be one of our solutions. So given something like this, we know that cosine is going to produce a negative ratio in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. And what we found is 2.17 is going to be our first solution. This went all the way over to 2.17.
And if we want to find out what our second solution is, well, we should probably find out what our reference angle is, because we know we're going to have something in quadrant three, but we can find that better if we had a reference angle from it. So um, it's a little bit tough with some of these calculations here. So let's go pi subtract our answer and we'll get a reference angle of 0 0.9745. So that's our reference angle. And we know that to find our solution in quadrant three, you would take your reference angle, which we have listed right here, and you're going to add pi to it. So let's add pi to that. And our second overall solution will be 4.12, 4.12. Okay, so let's go back here and we get 4.12. Now, I'm not gonna go through this right now, but I, I can't encourage you enough to uh, take the initial question right here, go to your graphing calculator, put that in for Y1, find the x-intercepts, and your x-intercepts are going to say x equals 2.17 and x equals 4.12, and that's gonna be uh, a whole lot easier if you don't have to show any of the algebra and it'll be a whole lot easier just to confirm that you're on the right track. Okay, that's it for part two of solving trig equations. Thanks, thanks for joining.